Hey everyone, I wanted to make a quick video about my new investment strategies. I wanna start off by saying I'm not a financial expert. This is all my opinions that I've formed from my own research and you know my own due diligence. And as you know, I've been trading, day trading specifically, on the Thinkorswim platform, just practicing and getting more familiar with the stock market. But I've decided to put that on the back burner for a little bit. Uh, until I get the these investment vehicles up and running because they are passive they don't require as much effort to manage but they do take a little bit to get started and some of my little history is that I've always been good with handling my money um, from paying off my debt to handling student loans and just saving money but I've always have been bewildered by all the information out there concerning investing and day trading, swing trading, that sort of thing. So I never really got into it. I didn't have time, you know, with the medical career I had in the past and then trying to get a new developer job and, and going through Lambda school and all that. I didn't have any time left over. And so it's an excuse, but also um, this year, I am grateful that uh, the situation that we have now has given me more time to evaluate my financial situation uh, as a big picture. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some big moves I made recently. The first being um, I did get a developer job just this year in March. And so that opened up the 401k for me. I've had one in the past, but I've sold it off because it really didn't you know, earn that much. And um, I didn't really think about it back then. And so I looked into my 401k and trying to decide how much I should invest into it, that sort of thing. Next, I opened up a Roth IRA with Charles Schwab. And I'll go more in, into why I chose uh, Charles Schwab as my full service account. And then lastly, I just want to cover what's happening with my other accounts concerning Fundrise and M1. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So I landed a developer job back in March and they had given me a 401k and their contribution is 100% of the first 4%. And I knew a little bit about it in the past and my friend had also asked me recently, but I wasn't sure. So I ended up asking directly to the service itself. My company uses empowerment, Empower Retirement and Basically, their answer is that they calculate 4% of my paycheck. If I contribute that 4%, my employer will contribute the other 4%. This is the email that I had sent them just so that you can see. They also set me up with a health spendings account, which I won't go too much into with this video. What I want to point you towards was the employee savings trust, which is the 401k. On this screen, you can see that I've contributed about $320 year to date, and then they match that equally. So my current balance is about $670. And by the end of the year, I'll have $1,280 invested, and then of course, that's going to be about 2400 or 2500 total. The limit for 2020 is actually $19,500 is the maximum you can make. And then uh, 57000 if you're counting your employer's contributions as well. That's the max. I questioned about whether I should max it out and decided that the general advice that I've read online and things I've heard in the past is that you should only match up to the max that they'll contribute. So if it's 4%, just contribute four percent and let them do the other four and then take your money and invest elsewhere the main reason is that there's not a lot of investment options in the plans as, as i'm about to show you and so that money is better invested elsewhere where you might get a better rate of return and then i'm going to show you now more of the portfolio that I've set up uh, initially. At first, I've chose the Putnam Retirement Advantage Trust 2050. 2050 is my projected retirement date. And they have a whole sheet about this specific portfolio, the different allocations, the different style of investing, the risk level and volatility. What I found out is that I'm a little bit more of a risk taker. And so there's a lot of, you can see that the bonds are about 55% um, in my portfolio right now now which is good but it could be better 
And so my strategy is actually going to be more towards large cap, mid cap stocks, because those have higher risk, but also have higher return. And since I'm a little bit younger, that's what I would want. Not bonds. Bonds is something when you're about retirement age, you want just a little bit of growth, but don't want to take too much risk. I decided that I wanted to change my plan. And so I evaluated and I looked at the different rate of returns, one year, the five year and the 10 year. But something else that's important is the gross expense ratio. This ratio is basically how much percentage they take of your account annually to just basically manage your account. And even if your account isn't even profitable, they still get that expense ratio. And I, I was thinking, man, that I could put in my own little effort by investing into index funds or ETFs and get a better return and then not have somebody eat away at my little profits, taking out cuts and fees. And so just looking at the filter here that I put down, the lowest one here was 0.02%. And this is basically investing in the, the stock market as a whole. And it's 100% equities. There's no bonds. So it's a little bit risky, but don't mind taking that risk. It's going to be mostly large cap funds and the annual your rate of return is pretty good and so let's just take a look at the total index here and see how they've been doing and the total returns i'm looking for what the composition of my allocations are and so most of it looks like it's u.s equity and then these are the different sectors that they're invested in basic materials a lot of it in technology so that's cool and ah okay so we have a lot of microsoft apple amazon facebook alphabet inc is is basically Google, Johnson Johnson. Okay, so all the good stuff in here. So I would rather invest into this rather than what they had me on before was because those were bonds. These are more equity, so they're gonna be earning me a lot more money in the long run. Like Apple and Microsoft have been really cool. They've been growing very quickly. I already put it in the order to switch over to Fidelity Total Market Index. As you can see, there's no ETFs on here. These are all mutual funds or index funds. They're not ETFs, they're not individual stocks. You're very limited by the investment options you have with a 401k, which is the main reason why why I decided not to max out my 401k and would rather put more money towards my Roth IRA or just putting it into my own brokerage account or just day trading, which I think I can make more money in the long run. So to start off with, the Roth IRA is a type of tax advantage account where you can make contributions each year up to the maximum amount, which for 2020 is $6,000. And it also depends on your salary as well and if you're married so let's say for example you're single and you make less than hundred and twenty four thousand dollars a year you're able to make the full six thousand dollar contribution I won't go into too much detail about the Roth IRA but you should definitely look into qualified distributions and withdrawals and also non-qualified distributions and withdrawals so I finally decided to go with Charles Schwab as my broker for my Roth IRA account I opened up a Roth IRA just this past week and funded it with $6,000 in order to start my investment journeys. I've looked into Fidelity and E-Trade as well, but the offerings at Charles Schwab were very attractive, which is why I went with them. The main reason was that I already had an account with them through the investor checking, and with this account, you get the fee reimbursement when you travel internationally. And you get this debit card, you can withdraw money from ATMs, and they would reimburse your ATM fees. One of the other reasons is that they have really great tools and service and they're just a big company and just recently announced in November 2019 Charles Schwab is acquiring TD Ameritrade which they're gonna close out mid 2020 and another reason is that Schwab did drop their commissions when you're trading on the US stock market and that was back in October 2019 so these guys are just getting bigger they're offering better services less trading fees and and some of their tools are really great. If you're looking for a stock, they give you almost all the information you could want and you can trade directly on their platform or you can trade on their desktop as well if you'd like that. They have a lot of investment tools as well. Here you can see I'm looking at ETFs. I put in some of the most popular ones and you can get a lot of information from these guys, just different quotes, different yields. And if you wanna look up more information about a specific company, they have all these different 
tabs that you can look at. And I've started using this and I was very impressed. It's not a Yahoo Finance thing. This is like a full fledged research tool. And there's a lot of different products that you can look into, including options, bonds, mutual funds as well. So very full service. Schwab just has really great offerings. They also uh, have a inclination for international stock as well if you're into that. And lastly, they introduce fractional shares. And I don't know about you, but I can't drop $415 on Netflix. I can put a little bit less. I just buy a fraction of that. So for all these reasons and more, you should look into Charles Schwab as one of your choices for a brokerage account. So you might be wondering what I'm going to do with my M1 Finance and my Fundrise account. With my M1 Finance account, I've liquidated my assets earlier this week and the reason for doing so is just to consolidate uh, the place where I can trade and pay attention to and so Schwab makes it convenient also because along with my Roth IRA I also have a brokerage account which I can use to invest in ETFs and stocks as well if I feel like it I can liquidate some money and put it into my checking account or like say when I travel I want like you know 500 bucks to spend I always found that transferring money between between uh, different accounts inside the same company is a lot faster as opposed to transferring money from like say Capital One to Schwab. That's one of the reasons why I liquidated M1 Finance. It's a great tool and it's great for beginning investors, but you don't have as much freedom because they only have one trade window. One of the great things about M1 is that they do have the dividend reinvestment across your whole portfolio, but Charles Schwab is offering the same thing more or less because you're able to reinvest your um, dividends back into that same stock. You can't do it across your whole portfolio, but you can do it for the same stock. So it's more or less the same. So I figured, let me just move everything to one place, make it easier to follow, and then kind of have more hands-on approach to my money so I can uh, pay attention to the returns. Next up for my Fundrise account, I decided to keep the money in here for now, just because I haven't decided what to do with it yet. It's been making good returns. I made $147 um, since last year, about July, when I I first opened it and so I'm gonna keep it here for now until I figure if it's gonna be better putting that money into the stock market that's for another time another video I also found a magic formula investing strategy by a hedge fund former hedge fund manager investor and professor as well his name is Joe Greenblatt and he wrote a book called the little book that beats the market and then he followed up with the little book that still beats the market this is a more hands-on strategy as opposed to just investing in index funds or ETFs. It requires you actually to purchase stocks and sell stocks every year and purchase stocks throughout the year as well. And the main reason for this is that you're looking for bargain companies and that make really good returns. So my belief is that putting in a little effort will get you more returns. Now the returns are a lot more than what you typically get with the stock market getting up to 30%. And so this is the whole reason why I want to start using this formula, putting some effort in, making more returns for myself in the future, be more financially responsible. And it all started with this video uh, that was created by Investing with Rose. She has a great channel so far and I highly recommend that you check it out. She introduced me to it and I thought, hey, you know, that sounds cool. If I can put a little bit of effort, make 23% as opposed to 10% average on the market, I'm all for it. I'm going to start researching more and start the strategy in September, but basically there's a website for it. You can go to magicformulainvesting.com and you do have to sign up an account in order to get the different companies in the screener basically the screener looks for all the bargain stocks and then also the potential returns that they'll have now the only catch with this strategy is that it takes time to work because these are not stocks that are hot up and coming and they're not like super volatile but they will return money 
in the long run. So in the strategy, it takes about three to five years to actually kick off. But if that promises you 20% return, then let's give it a shot. And lastly, I like to talk about the different strategies that I have going on. So first up with my Roth IRA account, it's a tax advantage account. So things that are growing in here grow tax free. So what I'll be using is the magic investing formula with my Roth IRA account. The main reason is that with the magic formula, you are buying and trading. So you suffer something from the capital gains tax. Therefore, you want something that you won't be penalized if you sell your your stocks within a year, which you do have a higher taxes that you have to pay. Or even if you sell after a year, there's still some tax. But at least in this account, those won't be factored in because it's a tax advantage account. So I'm going to be using my magic formula investing strategy here in my Roth IRA account. And then in this individual account, what I'll be doing is investing in ETFs and holding them long term. Because if you don't sell it off in a year, you don't suffer that capital capital gains and your money just keeps growing and growing and growing. The only thing that I'm looking out for is if I should invest in just regular ETFs without dividends or if I should actually invest in ETFs with dividends. And what I might end up doing is just a mashup of the two, half and half. Or So I also plan to put 6000 into this brokerage account and I'll invest in more ETFs, more passive things. So 6000 and 6000 just to see how they race against each other and the remaining money that i'll have i'll leave about probably ten thousand in my trading account my Weibo account but that's what i'm going to be using to generate money um just more on an active basis and so that's going to conclude my strategy about what i'm going to be doing with my finances so there are other investment vehicles which i did not mention in this video they include the solo and the roth 401k or the SEP IRA, or the health spendings account, or the HSA account. These are some of the main players that I came across during my research. Of course, there are other players, but they're probably not as important for, for me, and as probably not important for you. Of course, I'll share them with you when I do learn more about them in the future, but for the time being, I'm leaving you breadcrumbs in order to do your own research, if you'd like. And so that's gonna do it for me in this video. Please feel free to subscribe, to like, and to connect with me on my Discord channel, which I hang out regularly with my friends. And lastly, if you like the music, please check out my friend Juan. He makes uh, guitar music and lets me use them free of charge. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I hope you learned a thing or two. And please feel free to share with your friends, and I hope to see you again.